Let me uh, take you back just a little bit. You were already out of Pakistan at this stage, but uh, as you know, in November of 2011, uh, we had the NATO uh, Apache helicopters. They attacked this border area. At least 24 uh, Pakistanis were killed, soldiers there. And of course, this has really created even more of a strain. They, they uh, ended uh, cutting off the supply route. Uh, Secretary Clinton just recently uh, issued an apology. I want you to listen to this comment by U.S. Republican Congressman Louis Gohmert. He made this comment after Hillary Clinton's apology to Pakistan. And I want to get your reaction to this clip. Let's take a look. Pakistan is basically the biggest source of supplies, reinforcement, or help to the Taliban. And what do we do? We have our Secretary of State apologize to the country who kept our country's biggest enemy, the mastermind behind the killing of more Americans than any attack in our history on our soil, and they protected him, and they kept him protected. Now, that's a, a comment that's going to go over very well with uh, the public or a, a certain segment of the public in the United States. But how does it go over with you? Well, look, I, uh, I think anybody that's been in a marriage has had to apologize. I imagine the congressman, is a good married man, has had to apologize every single day <laughs> about however long he was married. Uh, uh, we were long overdue in that apology. And I think Secretary Clinton and uh, many others in the United States understood that when uh, 29 uh, soldiers are killed that are working with us. They're on the border fighting terrorism, are killed uh, by miscommunication and by mistake, not by blame. Uh, certainly an apology is due. Uh, so I think it was overdue. Uh, and I think the notion that you shouldn't apologize um, is one that I would question. But, but there are, are other, uh, just to set the record straight on some other things, the Pakistanis uh, there's no evidence that the Pakistani uh, officials at the high levels were harboring o Osama bin Laden. There is substantial evidence that they have worked very uh, diligently, sacrificed uh, many lives. They say 30,000. I can't verify that, but uh, certainly substantial Pakistani lives have been lost uh, in the fight in ter against terrorism. Uh, and I think we need to acknowledge that as well. But let me ask you this, because I just spoke to somebody who was involved in reconstruction in Afghanistan back in 2005, and, and he said that uh, with the Pakistanis, there's a game underway, that uh, we'll give you a little of this, but we're going to go over here, that, that they're playing both sides of the fence. Do you think that's true? Uh, is that a fair characterization? And, and if so, how much is the ISI involved in that, the military? Uh, I know it's, it's complicated, but can you walk us through it? Well, I have my, my problems with the ISI from time to time. But uh, quite honestly, the, the, Pakistanis, um, the Pakistanis have been very good at going after al-Qaeda and the foreign terrorists on their soil. They need to be better. Uh, they need to be more effective. We think we could help them be better. And certainly it's in China's interest uh, that they go after the terrorists on their own soil as well. I think that United States and China have that in common.